Hey, y'all, this is Troy Black. So I'm going to pray real fast, and then I'm going to share this prophetic message that the Holy Spirit gave me. Lord Jesus, I just give you all the praise, honor, and glory. I worship you right now. I thank you, Jesus, for being in the room with us. I thank you for showing up today, for moving, for touching people mightily with your Holy Spirit, with your presence, with your glory. Thank you for revealing yourself to people's hearts today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So this is what I heard, y'all, and I actually heard this on June 4th, 2022. I was in worship, and, I, and I'm actually going to share, after I share this word, I'm going to share what I typically do when I'm hearing from the Lord and how you can hear from God as well for yourself. This is what I heard. I heard Jennifer Garner and Hugo Weaving, they, the, the actress and actor, they are both going through a difficult season apart from me, apart from my voice. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. And then I heard unlimited issues and struggles. That's how it feels. And then I heard they're both going to find a moment of clarity and a potential conclusion to this mess. And then the Lord said, find it, find the answer in my presence. And then he said, that's the only place it will ever be found in me. My glory outshines every loss, every disappointment, every confusion and plan of man that went wrong. And then I heard him say after that, he said, a perfect match, a counterpart, a coming role. And then he said, undivided attention. The next thing I heard uh, from the Lord was, she's right where I want her to be. I believe the Lord is speaking about Jennifer Gardner here. And he's, but then he said, but she's missing something. And then he said, my loving hand to guide and protect her. And then I heard, a moment arises, an opportunity for revival, for complete redemption and purpose bursting forth out of the ashes. So what I believe the Lord is talking about here is that the Lord has given this purpose of being an actress, of acting uh, specifically to Jennifer Garner, that this is something God had planned for her life. But obviously he's pointing to the fact that she's missing something, his hands and to guide and protect her. So he's, she's missing the presence of the Lord in her life. But I prayed about this specifically today, y'all, because there was a film that came out, I th think this year, 2022, that had both Hugo Weaving and Julia Garner. But I believe the Lord is not talking about that film. I believe he's specifically talking about Jennifer Garner here. Um, and just in case you go research this, I, I believe that is not what the Lord is talking about, that film. But I did pray about this today and ask for confirmation. And I heard the Holy Spirit say this right before I started filming. He said, they've both been on my heart. So I believe this is why God is talking about them, them specifically. And then he said, they've both reached out to me in their own way behind closed doors. So I believe that God is referring to something in both of these people's past where sometime where they've reached out to him. And now God is essentially reaching back out to them. And here's the truth that we need to understand is that the world and especially Hollywood and the media and films and stories, a lot of times will tell you that if there's a God, that there's many ways to get to God. But the truth of the matter is Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we know from Scripture there's only one way to get to God. And some people watching this will say, yeah, but how do we know something like the Bible is true? How can we know that can be trusted, right? There's many religious books out there. There are many religions throughout history. And here is my response to that, is when I reached out to the God of the Bible personally, I found this verse, Jeremiah 29, 13, where God says, seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I did that. I searched for God with my whole heart. And listen to me, my friend, I found him a real and living God who really responded and really wants a relationship with us. And the only way to him, to the father, to the creator of the universe, the only way is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the son of God come to earth as a person and he lived a perfect life. And then listen to me, he died on a cross so that all of our sins could be forgiven when we turn away from our sin and we believe in him. So if you are in that place where you're saying, I don't know if God is real, I don't know if there is a God, and if there is, I don't know what he expects from me, here's my encouragement to you is to read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Bible, and ask God, say, God, if you're there, if you're real, make yourself real to me while I'm reading this book, and reveal to me the truth, and listen, I believe if you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. And then there's other people that are watching this, and I believe you're asking this question 
And the question you're asking is, why would God, if God was speaking to you today, why would he talk about uh, an actress or an actor or something like this? And this is what I actually heard from the Lord in response. I heard this back on May 16th. God told me ahead of time before he started to speak to me about um, celebrities. I've, I've also released another word recently uh, for, for Julia Roberts. And God actually told me the week before I started hearing these words uh, that he was going to start speaking to me in a different way and that it was going to be for, for, for a, there's going to be a good purpose behind it. And this is what I heard. I saw a vision while I was waiting upon the Lord in May of an old black and white ink drawing of a biblical male character kneeling on one knee and looking up at the cross. And I could see a light shining behind the cross of Jesus. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, as I was seeing this vision, he said, it was Joseph of Arimathea. And then I heard him say, he saw my burial, but you don't see him after that. So this was a man that I believe in scripture, if I'm not getting this wrong, um, actually took the body of Jesus and uh, helped to bury his body in a tomb that actually belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, and the Holy Spirit said, you don't see him after that. So this was like his contribution in scripture, right? And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, I want to live through my people. But some Christians are attempting to stay in a place of perpetual burial. Then he said, they are trying to keep me under by not allowing me to rule their every thought, direct their every step, and control their words through prayer and prophecy. So most Christians will say, yes, it's good to pray. And the Bible says, you know, the Bible teaches us to pray. But a lot of times we'll limit it to, I'm going to talk to God, and then I'm just going to kind of let things happen after that. Almost like the more, you know, and, it, and honestly, if, if you're not looking at God as a relational God who wants to talk back to you, you're leaning towards uh, the teaching of another religion, like karma or something, right? Which is wrong because it's like, well, maybe the more I pray, the more God things will just happen the way they're meant to happen. But prayer is not meant to be us putting coins in a slot machine and, and hoping to get the thing that we want out of it, right? Prayer is meant to be a relationship with God. So God doesn't just answer our prayers and, and you know, and check off our, our to-do list or something like that. That's not what prayer is. God wants to communicate with us and he wants to change our hearts. So it's us spending time with God and releasing our will to him and letting him give us his will. And then actually we come out of the prayer closet and we are changed. It's, it's not so much that we're getting what we want. It's that we are changed and then we can go and do what God is calling us to do. And that's God communicating with us as well. So I'm going to be sharing in a minute what I do to hear from God personally. And then you can do the same thing and you can hear from God for yourself. This is the next thing I heard the Holy Spirit say. He said about Joseph of Arimathea. He said, Joseph was on track for the season, but that's not what I'm doing now. Now I'm alive and I want to speak with my people in person through the work of the Holy Spirit. I want to give my people words to express my life, joy, and fellowship to the world. So we are meant to be the light of the world, but we cannot be the light of the world if the Holy Spirit is not speaking through us and giving us to wor the words to share. I mean, think about Peter, for instance. You know, Peter, before he received the Holy Spirit uh, on the day of Pentecost, he uh, really rejected Christ and he denied him three times. After receiving the Spirit, he stood up in front of thousands of people and preached the gospel. And thousands came to Christ in one day because of the boldness that Peter had through the Holy Spirit and because of the clarity of his message through the power of the Holy Spirit, giving him the words to say. The next thing the Holy Spirit said is, it might not look the way you've seen a prophetic ministry speak on my behalf. So th this was the Lord speaking to me now, okay, about this ministry he's given me. And he's saying, it's not going to keep, it's not going to look the way that people think that it should look. But then he said, but it is needed in this hour. And then he said, it's critical that my people hear from me. Okay, listen, God wants to speak to you. He absolutely does. And scripture backs this up. This is not a new teaching. This is not different from what scripture says. Paul in scripture says, I wish you all would prophesy. I wish you all would prophesy. Talking to believers. Jesus said about the Holy Spirit that, that when the Holy when the helper comes, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. So the Holy Spirit wants to be your teacher. He wants to be your guide, your comforter. He wants to, to prophesy through you. And no, not every Christian is going to uh, you know, actively operate in the gift of prophecy, but we can all hear from God personally. This is what I heard. Oh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to share this. Uh, 
I'm going to share this other thing first, and then I'm going to share this last prophetic message from the Lord uh, that I heard in May. Okay, and this I heard on this on a different day on May 21st. This is what I do personally, practically, to hear from the Lord. Okay, number one is I value God's voice, and I'm not perfect at this, y'all. I'm not. But this is my encouragement to you. If you want to start hearing God either for the first time or you want to hear him more clearly, value his voice. This means take on the fear of the Lord, not in the sense of oh, I'm dreading what God might say at any moment. You know, not that kind of unhealthy fear, but a healthy fear where you say, you know what? I value what God has to say more than what I think, more than what I've been taught, more than what uh, my friends think more than what the world thinks. I value God's voice over every other voice in my life. And one of the ways we do that is by choosing to silence other voices, right? And by choosing to actually get into the word of God and ask God to speak through the word to us, but also getting into the word and learning what God sounds like, what his voice sounds like, but also what is his character like? There's so many people are out there today, you know, especially online who will tell you God's like this or God's like that. God has told us what he's like. He's told us what he's, his voice sounds like. And that is found in scripture. So get into scripture and then anything you hear from God through the Holy Spirit, test it. If you think if you have any question whatsoever in your mind, is this from God or not? Test it with the scripture. That's valuing his voice and that's having the fear of the Lord. And also valuing his voice means to wait upon him until he speaks, to choose to value his voice so much that you you're willing to trade the time and the priority you're willing to prioritize his voice. Number two is humble yourself, humble yourself. And, and one of the things when we choose to humble ourselves, that means we're not limiting what God can say to us. Okay. When I heard this word about, you know, Jennifer Garner and Hugo weaving, it was weird to me. And I thought, God, are you really speaking to me about celebrities right now? You know, like, or that word about Julia Roberts. I, my question in my mind is, God, are you really speaking to me about celebrities? Why? You know, what's the point? You know, but I had to humble myself and I had to say, you know what, Holy Spirit, if this is really you, I, I need you to confirm this to me. But also if it's you, then I, I, I'm going to put my own opinion aside and I'm going to let you speak. And I'm not going to limit what you can say to me. And we hear God so much better when we do this because our, our, we, we're not looking for a preconceived message. You know, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak. Okay, and another way to do this, to actually humble yourself uh, before the Lord and hear His voice, is to pray in tongues. Okay, praying in tongues prepares your, uh, your, your spirit to hear from the Holy Spirit, right? You're, you're speaking the words of God, may, maybe through a heavenly language or maybe even... You know, but it's praying in the Spirit. It's praying the words that God gives you. It could be in English, but it's the Holy Spirit speaking through you and praying through you, right? But then the other thing it does is it humbles you because, in you know, especially when you're praying in tongues, you don't know what you're saying, you know, unless the Lord gives you interpretation. But it's it's causing you to approach God like a child and say, God, I don't know what's best. You speak through me. Number three is to listen with faith. Listen with faith. And what I mean by this is listen with expectation that God is really going to speak. A lot of times we come with, and we with unbelief and we say, God, oh, oh, that you would speak. You know, oh, that I would be like uh, holy enough to hear from you. That would just be amazing. But I know I'm not going to. That's unbelief. Why? Because Jesus paid the price for your righteousness on the cross. So listening with faith means listening through the lens of Jesus has already done the finished work on the cross. I get to come boldly before the throne room of grace. I don't have to be afraid of coming before God. I don't have to be afraid of listening to see what he says. I can hear from God because of what Jesus did for me. That is listening with faith. And anytime we have that unbelief in our minds where we think, oh, I, I, God probably won't speak to me because I made this mistake, or God probably won't speak to me because I haven't done this. That is that is the quickest way to shut off the voice of the Holy Spirit. We need to listen with faith. And believe that we can hear God because of his grace, because of what Jesus did for us. It's not our own merit. We haven't earned it. It's all him. Number four is treat him like a person. Treat God like a person. If you want to hear from someone you love, you have to call them on the phone, right? You have to talk to them. You can't just like, you know what I mean? Like you have to prioritize spending time with them. The same thing is with God. Get alone with him. You know, prioritize one-on-one -on -one time. Well, you know, if if I only ever talked to my wife in public around other people, she would not feel like we we had a good, healthy relationship 
because it would, it, I would be treating her the same way I treat everybody else. But I, but I spend time with my wife alone. I say, Hey, let's spend time talking together that I'm not going to give to somebody else. Right. Because I'm prioritizing that personal relationship with her. And we need to do the same thing with God. We need to get alone with him. Say, God, I want to spend time with you right now. I want to be with you and I want to hear from you. Number five is ask to be filled with the spirit and ask to hear his voice. So Jesus says in Luke uh, 11, 13, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And I recommend you to read the whole passage of Luke 11, 9 through 13, where Jesus makes this promise to those who ask for the Holy Spirit and who seek for the Holy Spirit. And this he's talking to people that are already believing in him, right? And he's saying there's more of an experience of the Holy Spirit you can have that you haven't experienced yet. There's always more of God that you can experience. Why? Because God is infinite. Uh, God is eternal. There, his love surpasses knowledge, the word says. That means we are going to constantly be learning more and more and more about his love and about his, his, himself and, and just being in awe of, of his glory. That means here on earth, too, we can hear him more clearly, y'all. We can get closer to God than we've ever been, but we need to ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not that that's not something we have to constantly do all the time because we can believe by faith that we have the Holy Spirit. You know, if we if we know Jesus and I believe every believer has the Holy Spirit living inside of them. But we can also ask to be filled to a greater degree to have more of an experience of his presence in our lives and his glory manifesting in our lives and his voice that we can hear clearly. And if you've never heard the voice of God, just ask, just ask, say, and start asking in faith and say, God, I ask that you begin to speak to me clearly and that you clean out my ears spiritually so that I can hear your voice and then do these other things I've encouraged you to do. And listen, I believe you'll start hearing God either for the first time if you've never heard him or you'll start, begin to hear him more clearly. Let me share this last message from the Holy Spirit. Um, this is a, is, a, is a word about unity and about change, okay? So I'm going to share this, and this applies specifically to God speaking in ways that we don't expect and doing things we don't expect him to do. And I believe God is going to do more and more of that as people, as we as his people begin to align with his will and align with what the Holy Spirit is doing now. You know, in Scripture, it, it would have been the hardest thing for the for some of the New Testament believers who had followed the Jewish tradition for a long time to transition over into, OK, this is the new covenant. This is what we're doing now. Right. But the Holy Spirit leading them and giving them that comfort and that guidance is the reason they were able to do it in faith. Right. Right. So anytime the Lord starts to, it's the same message, the gospel message, the, that has not changed. But God preaches the gospel in different ways at different times. Why? Because the world has changed and because uh, people communicate in different ways. Obviously, we could not have preached the gospel online 50 years ago because there was no internet, right? But now we have the opportunity to do that. And so how do we do that? We need to hear from the Holy Spirit to know how to do it practically, okay? That's my point. Here we go. This is what the Lord spoke to me on May 21st. He said, I'm working on building arches, arches like for a bridge. And he said, I'm building bridges between sex in my kingdom, sex, S-E-C-T-S. -E so different parts of his kingdom, right? And then he said, crossing racial, denominational, and power divisions. The archway is the support of the bridge. And I'm working on hearts of my people right now to prepare them for the mixing that's about to occur. My people are ready and in the process of getting ready to unite like never before. I am in the midst of this is the Holy Spirit speaking. And he said, there will be those who fight against it, calling it compromise and creating dissension. But don't listen to them. Listen to me. This is the Lord speaking. And he said, come right to me. And then he said, come right to my feet and wait upon me and I will answer you, says the Lord. I will be with you as you unite for the sake of my glory and my kingdom coming here on earth. And then he said, don't be afraid to unite with those who have a few things wrong. This is an interesting thing for God to say. Don't be afraid to unite with those who have a few things wrong. It is not. And then he said, is it not my job to correct the ones in error? And he said, it's not your job and it distracts you from your mission to win the lost and set people free. So I think a lot of times we will not walk in unity with other believers or other denominations or other groups, you know, of Christians because we can see that they are in error about a few things, right? Or we go, well, they don't believe this, and so we can't work together. And that is not what the Lord is asking us to do. He's asking us to walk in unity, to strive for unity with other believers, even if we see they have a few things, a few non-essentials wrong, okay? Even if we disagree. And here at the end of the day, the truth is we could be the ones that are wrong. Why? Because none of us are perfect, right? And if we think 
we know everything, we're thinking too highly of ourselves and we need to listen to Paul and not think so highly of ourselves. Okay. But at the same time, if we have, if we agree on the essentials, the essentials of the faith, we can walk in unity and we can be united with other believers and other denominations. And we can work together to reach the world for Christ, to reach the word world for Jesus. Listen, there would be so much less, so many less roadblocks along the way if we could just learn to work together as Christians. I hope that this message has encouraged you. And I'm praying, I'm going to pray right now for every person listening to uh, to not only be filled with the Holy Spirit, I just feel the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Uh, and I feel that the, that prophetic anointing from the Holy Spirit. And I believe the Holy Spirit is giving this out to people right now. And I hear him saying, I'm baptizing people uh, in my presence with my glory, but also with the gift of prophecy, with that desire to prophesy, with that, de that desire and that anointing uh, and that strength. I hear the Lord saying there's a strength that's coming um, for some of those who are already prophesying, who are already preaching the word, who are already sharing what God has to say with people. And that's not just prophecy, y'all. That's the word. That's a message of truth. And that's uh, that's the mission that God has given you. God's, God is going to use all of us in different ways. And so don't get off track with the mission he's given you just because you want a gift that somebody else has. But go to God personally and let him reveal to you why you're here and what purpose he has you to fulfill. And then move forward in grace and with the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill that purpose. So Holy Spirit, I just thank you right now for baptizing people in your presence. Uh, if there's anyone listening that needs to get physically water baptized, Lord, I ask that you would put that on their heart to go do that at the right time. But also I just ask that you would baptize people in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit right now, that they would begin to feel that uh, anointing, that glory on them. Anytime that you're giving them a work to do, Lord, that they would say, wow, I know this is what God is ask asking me to do because the presence and the power of God are all over it. He's 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 literally filling me right now with power as as, I, as I'm being obedient, as I'm saying yes to what he's he's doing, and that is what the Lord is wanting to do for you. He's wanting to follow up uh, his his word to you, what he's asking you to do with the confirmations of glory that follow obedience. When you start to say yes to him, God is going to bring his glory in, and he's going to say, "Okay, where well, I'm going to fill the temple." Remember in in the in the scripture where. Solomon finished the temple. They did what they built the temple uh, the way that it was supposed to be, right? They, they, they finished it out. And then suddenly when they finished the work and they were obedient to the Lord, the glory of God filled the temple so that they could not even minister after that. And that is what God is wanting to do now. In these last days, I hear the Holy Spirit saying is to fill his temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit now to fill his temple with the glory of God so that we cannot even minister when we want to. But rather, it'll be God's his Holy Spirit working through us. It'll be God's will being done. And, and sometimes, y'all, we need the glory of God to come in to stop us from doing what we're doing so that God can move, so that God can do what he wants to do. Sometimes we're so busy working, we're so busy doing, we're so busy trying to build things and grow things and, and do to complete the goal we have for our lives. And I hear this from the Holy Spirit now that we don't even get done the things that need to get done. And those are the things that God is telling us to do. And when we say yes to him, we prioritize his voice. We hear what he has for us. And then we say yes to him. We do that. That obedience attracts his presence and his glory is going to fill the temple. His glory is filling. And I hear the Lord saying his glory is filling this room right now. This room that people are in uh, as they're listening right now. There's there's some people listening. The Holy Spirit's presence, y'all. And I just feel that that beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit right now. He's coming in right now and he's confirming things. I hear the Lord saying he's confirming that anointing to specific people listening that uh, that prophetic presence is is how I like to say it. That prophetic presence. It's this presence where you it's the Lord coming and manifesting himself to you in a specific way where it confirms the word he's speaking and it confirms he wants to speak to you or he wants to share something with you. Uh, and oftentimes, y'all, when I'm hearing from the Lord, first I'll feel that presence, that that prophetic anointing come upon me, and then I'll hear the word. And I know in that moment, stop everything I'm doing and listen to what God has to say, because God is about to speak. And God wants to do that for you as well. He wants to make it so very clear uh, what he's doing in your life and when he begins to speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that anointing power, for that Holy Spirit 
uh, glory and presence and confirmation and clarity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I, the, this is the last thing that I'm hearing from the Lord uh, to share. It is that by the end of today, when after you've watched this video, the Lord is wanting for very, for several people listening, um, many people I'm hearing the Lord saying, listening to this video, by the end of today, he's wanting to bring clarity to a word he's been speaking to you specifically. So take the time to wait upon him after this at some point in the day when you have the chance and listen and say, God, I need clarity for the things you're asking me to do. I need clarity uh, for this decision. I need clarity over this prayer request, whatever it may be, uh, over this prophetic word I heard years ago, whatever it may be, or, or a, even a season of dryness that you're in, you know, and you're asking that why question. God is wanting to bring clarity to you today, right now. Do, do what I've encouraged you to do. Listen with faith and ask God for that clarity and wait upon him. And I hear the Lord saying, yes, yes. I'm bringing clarity, says the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for your joy. Thank you for the joy of the Lord in the presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Uh, just moving through this video and moving through this message and moving on every person listening, myself included, Lord. And I'm just so grateful for your glory, for your presence. I'm so grateful, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross, that the gospel message never stops working, that it's exactly what we need today. And it is... Who the fulfillment of the promise that you promised to Abraham, Father, when you said that through him, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. What Jesus did when he came is the fulfillment, Lord, is what the Old Testament saints looked forward to. And it's what we are always going to be looking back at, Lord, for eternity. And we're just going to be glorifying you and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you for what you gave on our behalf. And we're just so grateful and we're just so filled with joy over who you are and how you've revealed yourself to us in these last days. And we love you, Jesus. We're so grateful. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, y'all, I just love the presence of the Holy Spirit. I, oh, man, I just love it when God shows up. This is a lot longer than I meant it to be, but it doesn't matter because the Lord is here. Uh, and I'm just hearing the Lord ask me to actually mention this, y'all, or else I would just end this right now. This book here, Stop Worrying. I did recently release the audio book. Uh, it, and where I, I'm reading the book myself, it's on audible.com, it's on the Nook platform, and, and a lot of different uh, audiobook platforms. Um, so go, please go check it out, read some of those reviews. And, and, and again, spend some time in God's presence today. Wait upon the Lord and say, God, I need clarity and let him know what you need clarity over and then give room for the Holy Spirit to speak about anything he wants to speak about. I love y'all so much. I hope you've enjoyed this time. I've enjoyed this time in the Lord's presence. Uh, <laughs> this is just awesome. Uh, and I will see y'all next time.